Hello, welcome to today's kind of project kickoff update kind of a thing. Uh, with the Sherman uh, up project currently on hold waiting for uh, parts to come in, I figured time to start my next project, which was, is this Cromwell platoon uh, I was very grateful to get for Christmas. So during Christmas break I went ahead and built them, and last week or so I went ahead and uh, started painting them up. I thought that since I was taking a slightly different approach with these tanks compared to some other models, uh, I thought it might be of interest to kind of showcase some of the things I'm doing and the approaches I'm taking. Maybe you'll get something out of it, maybe you won't, but still, uh, maybe you might find it interesting to see kind of what's what's been going on. Uh, serve as kind of an update and here's what I've been doing for the year so far. Alright, so after building it, um, I decided to take a slightly different approach with the priming. Now, in scale modeling, especially in larger scales like 35th scale, you really have a lot of opportunity to get a lot of detail, not only in the model, but in the details of the paint job itself and the weathering. Now, when you get down to 156th scale, and of course the smaller you get, the harder it is really to get those details. Now, on a tabletop, you're not going to be looking at it at, you know, two inches from your face. So, what I'm trying to do is the same kind of thing I did with the infantry I've done. I want this to be looking like a force that you would be viewing on the battlefield or in a photo from the scale distance that would be between you and the, whatever distance the model is on the tabletop. You know, that's a few hundred feet, maybe. Now... What that means is some of those smaller details, especially like the paint chips and the the uh, the detail rust and all those uh, finer elements of the weathering and paint scheme, can actually disappear at the tabletop distance. Because what happens is when your eyes see those very very small, what I'll call pixels, if you will, of color changes, they your mind actually tries to merge the two colors. Uh, <clears throat> kind of a funny example of how this works is actually the military, the U.S. military's uh, digital camo pattern they've got uh, currently with the, that gray and sand color. Uh, they found that because of the way that camo pattern was actually implemented, it didn't work because instead of creating a broken up silhouette like they envisioned, they're running into, I forget what the, the effect is called. I'll go ahead and put it in the caption below. So you guys can look it up if you want. But what the, the eyes do is they take those very, very small, close patterns of color and kind of blend them together into one color. So instead of seeing a camo pattern at a distance, you see a solid color or a almost solid color. And what will often happen on a tank or a vehicle at this distance, <clears throat> like let's just pretend this is a real tank and you're viewing it at this scale, this real distance of a couple hundred feet, you're going to lose a lot of that detail in the fine uh, dirt, specks, rust, chips, and all that kind of stuff. If you were to include it on the model, your eyes are going to interpret it a little differently. They're going to they're going to blend it all together and you lose that detail. So what I'm trying to accomplish here is more of a scale model approach at a tabletop distance. So that t is going to be a little tricky because I do want to have some of the details uh, as far as some of the shading so you can pick out some of the panel lines or whatever. I do want to have some elements of the dirt or dust really that accumulates the weather patterns uh, or the weather, uh, I guess, fading of the paint. So but I can't do it too much, or the eyes will just blend it out of the picture completely. So, but one way to accomplish this, one thing to do is to prime the model in two halves, basically, the top and the bottom. So the first thing I did is I primed the tracks and the undercarriage black. In fact, I painted the bottom of the tanks. Um, let's see, this section, this angled panel here and this lower section here I primed black 
those are not going to get direct light reflected back, so they're going to appear darker. And the rest of the tank, everything you see on the side and above, is primer gray. Um, I basically use you know, the regular uh, gray surface primer from uh, Vallejo. Alright, so once that was done, it was a simple matter of just applying the, the base coat. Now, I want to kind of put this in perspective. A lot of you, I'm sure, know that you know if you want bright colors, you paint with a gray or a white primer. If you want deep, somber colors, dark colors, you want to paint with a black primer, right? That's really what you're doing here, but instead of going for the color uh, fading, you're, you're forcing a shadow, in a sense. So, <clears throat> the next step was to mix. After doing a little bit of research, I mixed uh, olive green, uh, 888 and Russian Uniform 924 from Vallejo to be the uh, appropriate British olive, I guess khaki green that they use, khaki drab that they used in 1944. Okay, just before we went into Normandy. So the entire model got a base coat of that and so did the sides of the wheels and actual hull. Now you can see, or should be able to see, there is a gradation difference, you know, one's, this is darker than this, and that's the intent, in full intent. <clears throat> so it worked out so far. Now the other thing I just make sure these are separate so that I could paint the tires, rubber tires, on each of the road wheels and the bogies. Left these completely, uh, I, even though I primed these, I left them unglued so it was easier to get at all the details. But one thing I want to make sure you do is clean off the surfaces that are going to be primed or painted or sorry, glued together. So I just take a small, you know, this quick sanding block, fine sanding block, and you can just run over there to clean off the the paint, the primer, so the glue will adhere better. You can even do it on the these nubs here. Do everything you can to make the glue stick better. Okay, so very simple, simple thing to do. Now, I left them on so it'd be easier to to paint and dry brush on the sprue. And the way these are situated, as I cut them off the sprue, any of the connection points I can hide against the vehicle so you won't be able to see that. The external edge of the tracks would be the part that was away from the sprue. So will be very helpful. Matter of fact, even on the on this, everything that is where there's a gate, all of those spots are going to be hidden by the connection to the hull. So I don't have to worry about you know flash showing or cuts or anything like that. Now, once I did the painting, the uh, base coat went into step two. That was to get a little bit of uh, shading variation on the green itself. Now I'm not sure how this come across in the video, but let's see if we can we can get it. I'm gonna move the camera a bit, see if we can get some some good shots. Okay, let's take a quick look at these. Now, with the 50/50 mix of the olive green and the Russian uniform, to get the right color of green, I went back over it with a second. Uh, application of just the Russian uniform, which is slightly lighter, and chose specific areas on the model with which to kind of apply some fading. You can actually see it in this fairly well. There's some right here, over here, down here. On the back deck, there's some areas here. And on top of the turret, there's a, f a little bit of around again trying to be subtle and not in too many spaces so again when you're sitting at the distance of you know three foot away from the model it doesn't blend into one color you can actually see that there's some variation so that's the approach I took with the with the greens okay so basically the next step is going to be to dry brush I'll just 
ever so slightly a little bit of steel uh, on the track treads and the black rubber tires. That's all that needs to be done there. On the hulls, I'll go ahead and on the different machine guns, I'll put the appropriate uh, dark gray, black gray on there. I think I'll be using German gray again because the machine guns were uh, a gunmetal color. And the gunmetal that Vallejo actually is, has a little bit too much shine to it, the gunmetal gray. So I'm going to avoid that except uh, maybe some highlights at the end. Now the open turret patches uh, within the Cromwell's, the actual in interior paint color was, uh, I've got some differing opinions on this, but I've heard of it being silver on the inside, and I've also heard of it being white. Either way, it's going to be a bright color, and those will be, I will paint those uh, internal surfaces that color, and then I'll paint the actual figures uh, completely separately at a, at a later point. I have to do some work to model the actual tank commanders with the proper helmets. Because the uh, Generally, the British helmets in the tanks weren't very comfortable or very practical. But so far, I have not found any pictures of the Cromwells in combat with the actual tank commander not wearing his helmet. So, most of the British tank commanders uh, do wear the beret. The Polish, however, didn't seem to do that, so i got to modify any uh, commander figures I've got for these tanks and make sure I've got a, the appropriate tank or helmet on. So <clears throat> that'll be a separate part of the project. I don't think I'll necessarily get to it right away. All right, well, once that's done, uh, it's just a matter of the glazing of the surfaces of the, the headlights and the spotlight, or searchlight, and it's at that point waiting for the uh, assembly. Then, followed by that, I'll do the uh, applying the gloss coat so that I could actually apply the decals. Then after that, it'll become time to do stuff like <clears throat> the washing the details, the panel lines, get the uh, weathering effects going on and all that. So, that's what's coming up in the next few weeks as I work on these models. My goal is this week is to get these painted so that I can at least play with them. Uh, with the, the basic three colors on the table and uh, to, so that it looks good. So once it is, of course, you know, I'm able to play with it, I will start playing with it, but that's not going to be the end of the project uh, until I get the decals applied and the weathering completed uh, so I can see how I approach this as we go forward. All right, well, that's what it's been going on for the last couple weeks. Uh, thanks for sticking with me. Go ahead and share, like, and subscribe if you want, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.